everyone thank you all so much for joining me again i'm ashisha with she so crafty i hope you all are having a beautiful morning i'm um, during the springtime we've had some beautiful weather out there again i'm in cincinnati and i know just last week we had snow on the west side and it was clear on the east side but today it is beautiful and i wanted to come back to you all this morning with a new video on how to sublimate a doormat and this is an 18 inch by 30 inch doormat using only a 12 by 15 inch heat press as well as the eight and a half inch by 11 inch um, sublimation paper. So before I go ahead and get started, please remember to click that subscribe button below, hit the bell notification. So that way when I post new videos in the future, you'll be the first person notified. And I'm going to go ahead and get my camera turned around and we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so as I stated before, we are going to sublimate again today the um, 18 inch by 30 inch doormat. This is a polyester fabric here. So this is the section, just this middle part that we're going to actually sublimate. And we're going to use our 12 by 15 inch heat press. Um, it is a swing away heat press. I will post down below in a description um, where exactly I purchased it from. So that way you can check out that link if you're interested in it. It was a five in one. So it came with the actual mug press, a cap press, as well as a, pl a plate press and something else. Um, so yeah, um, we're gonna use this today. This is a smaller one, so I'm gonna show you how I actually maneuver the mat around to actually press the full mat. And then um, we're using, again, like I said, the, only the eight and a half inch by 11 inch paper because the printer that I use is the Epson ET2720. And the widest that you can print with that is eight and a half inch. Um, I didn't know that before I purchased it. If I did, I would have purchased a different printer. However, I found different ways to make it work for me to actually be able to press larger images, um, whether it's on a doormat, um, a bigger t-shirt, um, or like a actual banner or something. I've figured out different ways to be able to do that. And it's all about slicing your image. So I'll post a video later on um, in regards to how to slice your image, but I just wanted to show you all, this is the actual image here. This is the full image. And what I did was I just sliced it, so then that way you can kind of see where it is. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape it together on the back side, so that way when I go to lay it down on the actual mat, it'll just be one large image and ready to go. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and use that. Let me go ahead and heat up my heat press. And what I'm going to do, it should already be set. Let's double check. Yeah, I have it set to 375 for 60 seconds. So that's what I'm going to use today for this because, again, like I said, this is polyester fabric. It's just like a t-shirt or a hoodie or something that you'll want to use. And so I'm going to press it for the same amount of time that I normally would press that. So we're going to get this warmed up. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and get this taped together. And then I'll be right back to show you all the finish. Okay, so I'm gonna place two pieces of tape here first that's gonna hang over the edge. That way, when I go to overlap the um, other image on top to line it up together so the words are right in um, alignment, they'll meet up. And then what I'm gonna do is just tape down the back side of it just to finish that off. And then I'm gonna do that for the other end of the paper. And then I will have one whole image. All right. Okay, so I am back now, and I have the full image taped together. So let me show you the back. What I did was I just taped, I put tape on one side of the piece of paper on the back, and then what I did was I turned it back over to line it up on the front side, and I just pressed it down on the part that was overlapping, so that way it's lined up perfectly together, and then I just taped it all the way down in the back, for both sides so that way it keeps the entire image completely together and now you see that it is all together and you can see what the image is going to be so then what I'm going to do is um, with this again I had measured out the middle part of my actual mat and let me show you here um, what I did was I measured just this middle part obviously because that's the only part that we're going to actually sublimate on is just from here to here and so it measured 12 12 and a half inches here to here and then 24 and a quarter from here to here about 24 and a quarter so what i did was i just put those dimensions into silhouette design i created a rectangle in silhouette design 
and then I just put my image in there and then I just slice it and again like I said I'll post a video later on um, to show you all how to do that um, but I just want to give you the dimensions now in case you um, know how to do it you can go ahead and get started on it right away if you have the materials and everything to do it so now what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to lay out my design on the mat itself and I'm going to just tape it down to where exactly I would like it to be so let me just make sure that I have it on there it's nice and straight and I am going to tape it down and then what I like to do is I like to use again the heat tape I finally have my heat tape back in stock been waiting on that to come in I don't know what took so long but I'm glad that it is here but I'm going to tape this down in several areas just to make sure that it stays in place that's the biggest thing is you want to just try to make sure it stays in place so what I'm doing is and I'll show you make sure that it's lined up correctly So what I'm going to do actually when it comes to making sure that this stays in place and make it easier for me to turn it around is I have this like large photo and craft keeper storage thing right here. Um, now it is plastic so you don't want to have it all the way up against your um, heat press because of that heat obviously you don't want it to melt but I'm going to use that just because that was like the closest thing I had that was a, about the same height. Because if you lay, the way this lays over the actual heat press, um, it falls over, obviously, because it's not the same exact size as the heat press itself. So you want to just make sure that you have um, something that's just, for me, it was basically just to hold it up. Just to hold it in place, just to keep it leveled at this, like, almost about the same level. It is going to be slightly raised on one end, but that's okay. I just wanted to make sure that it was just slightly leveled. To where when it went to press, it had that per that evenness to it that it needs to press properly. So I'm just placing tape on here just in random places. Just to make sure that my image, again, like I said, just stays in place. And it doesn't come up off of the actual mat itself. Because then that's going to cause my image to shift. And I don't want my image to shift because then once it's sublimated, it is sublimated. Okay, so now I have the image actually taped down. What you want to do is you want to try to move it as best, as easy as you can to the actual heat press. And like I stated before, I have this here. You see why? So that way it lays almost flat all the way across because I have a smaller heat press. And I want to make sure that I'm able to get the entire mat on here. Now, because you'll see on here when I swing this around, it's not it's cutting off some of my image here. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to just tuck in this side because there's like a little gap back here where I can tuck it in and pull it down. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tuck it in back behind here, pull it down. And like I said, as long as you have your tape or your image taped down pretty well it should stay in place this heat tape really isn't the best tape for keeping it in place but uh, I feel like the more tape you use the better it works um, as long as you really get those corners down and those ends it's fine so I have that tape down we're good to go so what I'm gonna do is like I said, I'm just going to push this back as far as I can because I want to make sure that my entire image is on my actual press, my plate. And because this is a 12 inch and then the paper itself is only 11 inches long, I know that the entire page is actually on the press. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply my Teflon sheet. Just put that on top just so that way if there's any blowout, we'll have that. Um, I don't need to necessarily put it over there because we're only going to do the one side at a time. And then again, like I said, I have it set to 375 at 60 degrees. Now I'm looking at it, it's covering the entire image from the back to the front. I can probably push it back just a little bit more just to make sure. And I'm going to go ahead and get that pressed. Now, oops, 
So let me pull that up. Now, the one thing I want to show you is you may want to move this out a little bit further. Again, like I said, you don't want to have it all the way up on there, but because it's raised just a little bit, you want to have it out a little bit further just to make sure that it gets the proper um, pressure all the way through because that part's raised and may not, um, it's not going to get that part sublimated as well. So that's what we're going to do it. And then we're going to do it in two sections. So I'm going to do this side first and then I'm going to just pull it out and then we're going to do that side. Now what I could do is I could just flip it around, which I think I may just do that. I think that may be easier because obviously it's going off my table and I don't want it to really hang over. So what I want to do is just flip it all the way around and then have this side hang on that side and then just do it that way. So that's how it makes it a lot easier to be able to sublimate a larger item with a smaller heat press and smaller paper. Um, and I actually found that the eight and a half inch by 11 paper worked best for these because you don't need 13 inches, even though this paper or this mat is 13 or 18 inches wide by 30 inches. You don't need that huge paper that's 13 inches wide by 19 because the spot that you're going to actually sublimate is just right in the middle. Now, unless you're going to do something that's right on the edge of it, then yeah, you would probably need something like that because at that point it's going to be um, a little short on here. So I'm not going to remove that paper because I want to make sure that it stays in place. So I'm going to go ahead and just swing this around as best as I can without actually moving the image off of there. Because again, like I said, I don't want it to um, lift or anything. And then the entire image shifts and then I'm just like, oh my goodness, what the heck? It looks a hot mess. So that is hot. We're going to leave that down. Let's go ahead and push this back. And I will say the scariest part about doing these larger um, items with such a smaller heat press or like with a smaller machine or whatever the case may be is just really when you have your image taped together, it's making sure that it doesn't shift. So then that way it doesn't ruin the image itself. So we have that. And now we're going to go ahead and press this side again at 375 for 60 seconds. We'll let that go and then we'll come back and I'll show you the finished results. Alrighty, so we are back and it looks like it is done. So let's see. Now let's see what our results are. Now, again, like I said, with this, you may have to press it a few times. It may have shifted. We don't know. We shall see because with this, you have to make sure that you just have it exactly in this spot and that let me show you this all the ink came off of the paper that looks wonderful and here is the finish product now that's beautiful that's beautiful all right so here is the finished product this looks so amazing guys so Again, this is an 18 inch by 30 inch doormat that we sublimated using only a 12 by 15 inch heat press and the eight and a half by 11 inch A sub eco paper. Um, so if you want to just get more information on um, how to slice the images to actually sublimate on larger um, items such as a doormat, banners, whatever the case may be. Be sure to check out my channel. I will be posting more videos coming soon. Um, and one of those will be in regards to slicing the actual image. So that way you can do larger items with smaller heat press and paper. Um, so if you haven't already, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I would very much appreciate it. Um, again, thank you all so much for joining me. You have a wonderful day. Peace out.